Best Picture winners are cursed. We all remember E.T., but do we remember the movie that beat it? Gandhi? We all remember Goodfellas, but do we remember Dances with Wolves just as much? In my opinion, the Academy gets it wrong a lot. But in 1984, Academy voters got it right. And yet the winning film, Amadeus, was still forgotten. A masterpiece in its storytelling of talent and jealousy. The film stands as a cinematic masterpiece. But it's not placed on anyone's list of greatest films of the 20th century. And it should be. And here's why. Adapted from Peter Schaeffer's stage play of the same name, the film recounts the tumultuous relationship between two composers in 18th century Vienna, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and Antonio Salieri. The film captures the essence of the classical music scene in Vienna, showcasing the opulence of the court, the vibrant personalities of the musicians, and the creative genius of Mozart. Central to the film's brilliance are the outstanding performances by the cast, particularly F. Murray Abraham as Salieri and Tom Hulse, who plays Mozart. F. Murray Abraham's portrayal of Salieri is a tour de force, capturing the character's internal torment and moral conflict with nuance and depth, and his performance earned him the Academy Award for Best Actor. On the other hand, Tom Hulse's Mozart is a revelation, bringing the composer to life with a perfect blend of eccentricities, brilliance, and vulnerability. And he too should have won the Oscar. The dynamic between the two actors forms the heart of the film, elevating Amadeus to a level of emotional intensity rarely seen in cinema. Now the plot is simple and complex. The film begins with an elderly and mentally disturbed Salieri attempting suicide, leading him to be confined to a mental institution. When a priest visits him, he becomes intrigued by the composer's troubling confessions that he may have killed Mozart. And it sets the stage for Salieri to recount his life and his interactions with the famous Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Salieri started as a devout and ambitious composer, a deeply religious man committed to God. However, his world is shaken as he first hears the music of young Mozart. The scene is incredible. Mozart's genius and seemingly effortless ability to create beautiful music and complex compositions astounds Salieri. The contrast between Salieri's disciplined and methodical approach to composing and Mozart's seemingly divine gift being wasted on an immature youth triggers a profound crisis of faith of identity for Salieri. The internal monologue Salieri feels as he listens to Mozart's music for the first time, expressing his awe and jealousy, is so relatable as Salieri becomes increasingly obsessed with Mozart's talents. He also becomes resentful of the seemingly unjust distribution of musical gifts by God. Salieri is torn between his admiration for Mozart's music and his growing envy, jealousy, and bitterness and the relationship between the composers becomes strained, silently even more strained with Salieri attempting to undermine Mozart's career and personal life. When Salieri admits to having a crush on an opera singer only for that opera singer to be in one of Mozart's productions and have her be so thrilled by Mozart's work, Salieri can't contain himself. At first he tries to seduce Mozart's wife as revenge, but he has a change of heart at the last second. He then tries to spread rumors that Mozart molested a woman, but neither of these dirty tricks satisfy him, so he goes lower, hiring a housekeeper to spy on Mozart and then building a false trust with Mozart so that Mozart will confide in him and Salieri can find a weakness in Mozart, which he does. When Mozart's father dies, Salieri sees that the death put Mozart in a dark place. He's drinking more, and he seems lost in his head. So instead of consoling him, he takes advantage of Mozart, dressing as a mysterious person who offers money for Mozart to work on a new and disturbing opera. It would be like an actress today quietly angry and hating Meryl Streep for how easily acting comes to her. Or perhaps in an even more relatable scenario, an influencer who just can't gain an audience, internally suffering at how the Kardashians can gain attention at whatever they do. They question their own talent. They question the fairness of life. 
It's the universal question in all of us who have worked hard but see someone better than us who does what we do better with ease. And when that person is an obscene man-child like Mozart who chases women, acts immature in the presence of the king, uses crude language, laughs like a goofball, (laughs) Salieri can't help but question after all of his training and work in life to try to be the best, why he must work so hard to only be seen living in the shadow of Mozart. Salieri writes a piece of music for the king, only for Mozart to hear it once and not only be able to play it better, but improve upon it in seconds. The humiliation. The climax of the film revolves around Mozart's deteriorating health and Salieri's internal conflict. In a moment of despair and realization, Salieri and Mozart work together on a piece, something that so satisfies Salieri that it causes him to attempt to reconcile with God, confessing his sins and vowing to dedicate his life to thwarting Mozart's influence on the world. And the film concludes with Salieri revealing that though he has succeeded in outliving Mozart, it came at the cost of being forgotten by history. The ultimate F.U. from God. The film depicts the world as a land of mediocrity, and Salieri was lucky enough to become a composer for the king and rise above the rest. But when he hears Mozart music... He says, it's like he hears the voice of God. How can it come from this world of mediocrity where Mozart grew up? Salieri loves Mozart music so much, and he's so jealous of the talent that Mozart has that he can't admit to anyone, not even to himself. In his opinion, it's talent wasted on those who don't value it. He states at the beginning, if God made us equal, what about talent? The irony of life. And in addition to director Milos Forman's exceptional directing, storytelling, and performances, Amadeus boasts amazing visuals and a meticulously crafted production design. The film's recreation of 18th century Vienna is a feast for the eyes, with sumptuous costumes, opulent set designs, and a meticulous attention to detail. The cinematography captures the grandeur of the era while also delving into the intimate moments of the characters. The use of light and shadow, particularly in scenes featuring Mozart composing in candlelit rooms, adds a layer of visual poetry to the film. Furthermore, the musical score featuring Mozart's most iconic compositions is a masterstroke that elevates the film to a transcendent experience creating a symbiotic relationship between the visuals and the soundtrack. And the narrative is also so rich with historical details about the musical and the social milieu of the 18th century, offering a glimpse into the world of classical composers in the court of Emperor Joseph II, that you walk away learning and feeling at the same time. Amadeus is a compelling exploration of the complexities of talent, rivalry, and the human condition, featuring stellar performances, a brilliant script, and a visually and musically stunning presentation. And yet, if you ask nearly anyone today to tell you what Amadeus is about, beyond them saying it's the story of Mozart, they probably couldn't tell you anything more. And yet, those very people are most likely living a life like the one Salieri portrays in the movie. If you enjoyed this video, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss all my future content. And if you're looking for more movie essays and documentaries about celebrities, check out these videos right here that you can watch right now. Like one on Nicolas Cage, Steve Martin, The Simpsons, and yes, even Pee Wee Herman. And if you got an idea you want to run by me, I'm open to hear it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.